Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be doing my September wrap up which is all of the books that I read in September. I'm going to go through them in chronological order because there's a mixture of audiobooks and physical books. Throughout September I read 11 books. One of them, or maybe even two, I think I actually had already started back in August or even earlier, but they are all the books that I finished in September. And I'm not going to be too strict about whether I started them or not. It is all just the books I finished in September. Um, I had a really broad reading month, I would say. I read a lot of different books and I'm really excited to share them with you. The first book I finished was A Darker Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. Now, I was meant to be reading this in August for the Schwab Along, hosted by Alison from Antoi Reads and Kate from uh, Through Infinity, I think it is. I managed to finish this in September and I really, really enjoyed it. I was a bit hesitant because um, someone I know said that they didn't enjoy it as much as they thought it was, they would, and it was a bit slow. But I actually found it I would say it is still slow, but it is slow for a good reason, is how I'd say it. There's a lot of world building in this book and a lot of explaining of the magic system because it is the first book in a series. I think there is currently a like trilogy and then V. Schwab has then said that there will be sort of like a second trilogy, which the Kel and Lila story is supposed to have finished in this book and then there's like another arc in the next trilogy. So this is the first book in the trilogy and it's really hard to explain what this book is about because the first like half of the book is pretty solidly just slowly world building. You don't really get into the story until quite late in the book but it is about there being sort of three parallel Londons. There's Red London which is where Kel, the main character, is from and that has lots and lots of magic. There is White London, which is like another place with a lot of magic, but it's more dark and twisted, whereas Red London is quite organised and sort of civil. And then there's Grey London, which is kind of our version of the world, where there isn't really any magic at all, which is where Lila is from. And in this book, Kel is what is known as, as an Atari. And that means that he can pass between the different Londons. There are currently only two Antari left and they act as messengers between the different worlds. And Kel secretly smuggles. He smuggles things between the Londons, which is, I think it's equivalent to treason. It's like really, really bad, basically. He shouldn't be doing it. And he essentially gets tricked into transporting a magical object that is very dangerous. And Lila ends up joining him on this journey to sort of put the object back, <laughs> I guess you could say. And there's lots of murderous people chasing after them and it's very entertaining and I really liked them. So Kel is such a bean, I love him, he's so sweet. He's not like really badass like I thought he was gonna be. Um, I was expecting more of a, I don't know, I was expecting more of a Six of Crows kind of vibe, but it wasn't. Like, they're just such small beans that need protecting. I mean, Lila's more hardy than Kel, I would say. Like, I love Lila, she was pretty badass, but Kel was such a bean. Um, and I'm really excited to see what happens in the next book, so this is a really good read for me. Next up is Empire of Storms, which is the one I finish next on audiobook, and I'm currently rereading the whole of the Throne of Glass series because I want to read Kingdom of Ash. This is the last, um, Hey, my goodness. Selena. This is the last Selena slash Aelin book in the like series before Kingdom of Ash. There is Tower of Dawn next, but I will not be rereading Tower of Dawn because I didn't like it when I read it the first time. My plan is I have tried to start reading Kingdom of Ash and it's not happening because apparently I do need to know more about Tower of Dawn than I remember to be able to read Kingdom of Ash. So my plan is to go back and read a summary of Tower of Dawn so I can then read Kingdom of Ash soon. Um, but yeah, this was a decent reread. Wasn't loving how like ableist this series is towards people who use wheelchairs, but <sighs> are we surprised? Not really. But it was still a decent read if you can look past that. And um, yeah, I still prefer Corfields and Roses, but this is still a pretty decent book. By the time I got to this audiobook, I was really, really back into it and uh, sort of enjoying it as much as I did the first time around. Next was Splinters of Scarlet. Now this is a book box club book, I believe. Yes. Ooh. 
It has a signed book plate. Wait, is that? No, that's, that's not the page. There's a signed book plate. I know this is like a really awkward placement, but there really isn't like a good place in this book to put the book plate. So that's where I chose to put it. And I'm really glad that I'm keeping it now because that would be a really hard sell, I think, to resell it with a book plate there. But anyway, this book, how do I explain it? Because I'm trying to think how to explain it without spoilers. Basically, in this universe, some people have magic and this magic is very specific. The main character, whose name I have forgotten, Marit. <laughs> Marit has magic that basically allows her to sew just by like touching things. Um, so say this like shirt was ripped, she could just touch it and it would sew itself back together. Uh, but the price of using magic is that your veins sort of slowly frost up and you never really know when you're going to basically freeze to death from the inside out. Um, <laughs> dark, but yes. And so not everyone has magic, only some people do but Marit does, and Marit's sister died because of the frost, I think they call it. I can't remember, I think it's called the frost. Um, but yeah, her sister dies because of magic, and she was orphaned before that, so now she lives in an orphanage with a young girl called Eve who does not have magic, and oh, I'm going to have to check this to make sure I don't give any spoilers. Uh, so Marit's father was also, he died in the mines of a wealthy family and she thinks that he was murdered and then Eve gets adopted by this family and Marit manages to figure out how to join her there uh, so she can keep an eye on Eve and it's all about the unravelling of what happened to her father, what's going on with this family and all of that and like also an investigation to like why is magic doing this to people why are people freezing it is incredible like this book is so underhyped you really really should read this it's so good i just can't explain how amazing this was i was so surprised i just yeah read this book if you like fantasy and it's historical it's set in near, i think it's near copenhagen yeah near copenhagen so if you like fantasy, if you like historical fiction, if you like books set in sort of historical Europe, this, this is a good book, please read it. Mm. I did miss out one book that I forgot to say I read earlier, it was actually the second book of the month, and that was Dead Man Wonderland, which is a manga, and I'm gonna put that here for you to see. The reason I've forgotten about it is because I've already sold it because I hated it, didn't understand it, didn't know what was going on. The art style was really cool, I really liked that and I liked the main character, he seemed pretty cool but I just couldn't follow the story, couldn't follow what was going on and I didn't like that the main female character was really over sexualized so yeah, already sold it on Depop. <laughs> Uh, the next book I read from start to finish was Rooftoppers by Catherine Rundell. This is my first Catherine Rundell book and I really enjoyed it. I think this is technically a middle grade. It reads definitely like a middle grade, although the characters are older, I believe. I think they're like 14-ish. How do I summarise this book? It's really difficult. So Sophie was orphaned on a shipwreck, supposedly, and she is taken in by a single man and she believes that her mother is still alive. And it basically is about how social services decide to take Sophie away from her guardian. I forgot the name of Charles. Charles. His name's Charles. They want to take Sophie away from Charles, so they run away to Paris, which is where they think Sophie's mother is hiding, and try to find him. Uh, to, to find her, sorry. And while they're in Paris, Sophie goes up onto the roof of the hotel they're staying in, and she encounters a boy who says that he's a rooftopper, which is children that live on the roofs, and. I'm not going to tell you any more than that because any more is probably spoilers and it's really good. I actually like was blown away by how good this book is. It's really beautiful. Like the writing is really, really nice and the way the story unfolds is beautiful. You really get to see Paris in a completely different perspective and the characters are so sweet and lovely and they really do like develop over the book. And I really like Charles. He's such a good egg. He's such a good character. My only complaint with this book was supposedly one of the main characters is like 14 and they all read as if they were like 10 maximum. They definitely weren't like reading as the age they were supposed to be. That's the only thing I would warn you about but you can kind of forget that as you get into the book. The next book I read was Scott Pilgrim Volume 1. Does this have this Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life? That's what it's called. Um, I read this because this is my boyfriend's like favourite book slash graphic novel ever. Uh, also his favourite movie. 
I hate to say it, but I really don't like it. Like, I just don't like Scott. I really don't like books with unlikable main characters, and that's kind of... Scott is not meant to be likeable. He does, like, a lot of really awful things. And it's, like, really... Like, at the beginning of the book, he's dating a teenager, and he's in his 20s, and it's, like... Ugh. And, like, the whole book does make a point of it being, like, really gross. That is the point. But it's still, like, I just... I can't get on with books when the main character's unlikable. But I will read the rest, because it's not not a long read you know these are really really small graphic novels and there's only I think six of them which I mean sounds like a lot but when it's graphic novels that would only be like maximum a day reading. The next book I read was Cinder which is the first book in the Luna Chronicles. This book is like really damaged from a sticker that was on it. Really mad about that but um yeah this is the first book in the Luna Chronicles series. I actually mostly listened to the audiobook of this because I think it was a daily deal on Audible which is why I got it really cheap. Um, so actually I think I don't open this book at all, I just read the audiobook, but it's fine. It was an amazing audiobook, really liked the adaptation. I did really, really enjoy this book. I know there's quite a few problematic elements to it, and I was keeping that in mind while I was reading it, but I did really enjoy the fantasy and, like, sci-fi elements to it. That was really cool. And I loved this idea of, like, androids and cyborgs and humans versus cyborgs kind of thing. It was it was good. I really liked it. I've always kind of known that sci-fi is my favourite genre. I just have to find a really good sci-fi. Like I can't just read anything. And I also am not I'm not the biggest fan of like uh pandemic sci-fis anyway, even in a pandemic has made it worse. But this book like whilst it, whilst it does feature a pandemic, it had a lot else going on for it. And I really I yeah I was so surprised I thought it was going to be like a meh book because I know this was really really hyped and really popular maybe like 10 years ago I want to say which is not when I was reading those kind of books it wasn't on my radar at all so I missed out on that hype and I was really worried but I'm really glad I read it I have actually really enjoyed it I've got the second book already and yeah hopefully I will get to read that soon and I'll get to finish the series soon now, this is probably my favourite book of the month, and that's no surprise if you have seen my birthday book haul video, and that is The Adventure Zone, Petals of the Metal, which is the third Adventure Zone graphic novel. If you didn't know, The Adventure Zone is a podcast that is done by the McElroy brothers and their dad. One of the brothers is the dungeon master, and the rest all play Dungeons and Dragons together. And they do play quite traditional, like, character style in Dunge Dungeons and Dragons, but they don't really follow many of the rules. It's really silly, it's really wacky. I've never actually listened to the podcast. I've only read the graphic novels and the graphic novels are so good. I love them so much. Like they're so funny, so silly. They're really good for if you don't really know Dungeons and Dragons and you just want a fun sort of journey that breaks the fourth wall, breaks the rules of story quite a lot. And it's so unconventional and really fun. Like I cannot, express to you how just like fun these books are. This one has lesbians so if that is going to sell you on anything there is well I think they're two women so you know not strictly speaking lesbians it's sapphic there is a sapphic couple in here that's what I meant to say but yeah really good really funny love the magic systems and yeah it's so cool and so stupid it's great. The next book I read was also one that I read almost entirely or probably actually entirely on audiobook and that is the Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Um, you've probably heard about this a lot if you are on booktube or have any sort of like bookish social media accounts. It's very popular, it's been really hyped. Um, I picked this up cheap at Tesco thinking well if it's that hyped I should probably give it a go. Um, I didn't think I was one for adult romances but I am very wrong about that. This was so good. This is kind of new adult because they're both quite young in this story and it's really funny, it's really sweet. I I really enjoyed it. This has been a great reading month, honestly, like most of these books were really, really good reads. So this one is about two characters who I've already forgotten the names of, Leon and Tiffy. So Leon and Tiffy both need, well no, that's not a good way to start it. <laughs> Leon is living in a one bed flat and he is struggling with money so he wants to take on a roommate and Tiffy needs somewhere cheap to live. So they decide to become roommates and there's one like big catch, they share the bed. <laughs> They've never met each other before but they share a bed. Tiffy occupies the flat in the evenings and at the weekends and Leon only occupies it during the day because he works night shifts and he spends the weekends at his girlfriend's house. 
So it's very unconventional. They start to get to know each other by leaving each other notes around the flat. And it honestly is such a sweet story. There's a really good like side plot about finding some man's like old boyfriend. And it's, it's, it's so good, so funny, so sweet. The audiobook is amazing. It's read partially by Carrie Hope Fletcher and she is just the perfect like voice for Tiffy. I loved it. Um, yeah, I just like can't recommend this highly enough. It was surprisingly good. I think it's probably a five star read for me. I enjoyed it so much. Like I could just gush about this book for a whole half an hour if I wanted to. And as a newbie to romance, this was a really good introduction to romance. It's a good sort of bridge between uh, like young adult and adult. It's a good like new adult bridge book. It's, it's just so good. I it sounds so ridiculous and it is and that's like what the book does the book makes a point of how ridiculous the situation is and yeah i loved it okay so second to last was another book that i read entirely on audiobook can you tell i've been getting through a lot of audiobooks now that i live alone and just walk around with headphones all the time <laughs> it was american panda and this was a book that i was gifted in a giveaway and I did actually start to read, that's a lie, I didn't read this entirely by audiobook, I did read bits and pieces physically, I'm trying to think, I like switched in between, most of it was audiobook on Scribd because I have started a Scribd trial, I'm not going to be paying £12 a month though so just for the trial but yeah, um, <laughs> I so I listened to this partially on Scribd and then partially read it and yeah I really like this, I didn't love it as much as I thought I would but it was really good. I thought it was a really good exploration of how immigrants and I don't know, it's a, it's a really good exploration of how immigrant families live very different lives to sort of white American families. So the book is about May who in her family her older brother was disowned for marrying or not marrying for wanting to marry a girl who had endometriosis so it might have been difficult for her to have children that was the only reason that she had like a cross against her name and that's why he was disowned because he refused to break up with her so may is now going to i think it's mit or caltech mit she's going to mit where her parents are expecting her to do pre-med and like go on to do medicine and become a doctor but may honestly she seems like she has sort of low level OCD, she has got really really bad anxiety around germs and contamination and she also like hates the sight of blood and like bodily fluids, she can't deal with anything like medical at all. So she is sort of living this lie and it's about May battling with living this lie, having a crush on a Japanese boy who's actually not allowed to be dated because her mom mother does not like the Japanese and it's very, it's just like, it's it's sadder than you think it's gonna be like I really thought people were saying it's like a light-hearted contemporary fun novel it's not it's actually quite sad watching May have to go through this and also watching her family members have different realizations about their lives and things like that but it's a really really good book I was really glad that I read it it really opened my eyes to the different challenges that Asian Americans go through every day and yeah I <laughs> I would recommend it but don't go into it thinking it's going to be super light and fluffy because it's really not. Okay so one last book and hopefully you'll know this book because my review should have already gone up for this book and that was The Inheritance Games and I read that as an ARP so just to let you know I got a free copy of it in exchange for my review and participation in a blog tour. So The Inheritance Games was good, it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be by the end, like throughout the book I was really really enjoying it and I was gripped and I wanted to keep reading but the ending was really unsatisfying for me so that really took some stars off my rating but I did enjoy it, I liked having a little bit of a trip into young adult sort of thriller and mystery because I don't read that very much and yeah I thought it was pretty good, it was decent. I kind of do want to read the rest of the books now in the series when they come out to find out like more about the mysteries in the books and also just to see how Avery does. Um, so sorry, I forgot to give a quick summary. In The Inheritance Games, Avery Kylie Grams is in a really low income household. She is being raised by her older half sister because her mother has died and her dad has disappeared basically, he's not in the picture. and. They're very low income and one day she gets called into the principal's office and the principal tells her that 
um, she has to go to Texas because she has been named in the will of a wealthy billionaire called Tobias Hawthorne. Avery has never heard of him, but she goes anyway because he was literally a billionaire. She thinks she's going to be left thousands. And when she gets there, she finds out that she has actually been left almost his entire estate minus like a couple of million. And she has no idea why. She's never met him, doesn't know who he is, and never heard of him before. And there's this big sort of question mark around why has she been left it? And there's a few other mysteries in the book as well. And Avery is a really great character. She becomes more likeable the more you read the book. Um, you start to learn more about her. And there's a lot of really great characters in there. I do think like it needs a little bit more editing and the ending was not satisfying. And Avery, as I said in my review, kind of becomes irrelevant pretty quickly in the book, which is a bit disappointing, but it's still a pretty good read. If you like a thriller and if you like a mystery, I'd highly recommend you read it. Okay, so those are all of the books that I read in September. That is 11 books. And now how many of them did I read on audiobook? I'm just gonna have a look at my stack there and count it up. So I read six books, majority audiobook, which is pretty telling, like, over half of my reading was by audiobooks and that's pretty accurate to how I am finding basically how do I word this it's pretty accurate to how I'm feeling about my reading I do feel like I'm listening to audiobooks more than I'm reading physical books that feels accurate and I'm not mad about that I'm really enjoying audiobooks a lot um I think I would stick with script if there wasn't the restriction problem I haven't had anything restricted yet but I have heard pretty much everyone on Scribd saying that they have this big long list of books they want to read and suddenly they'll find that after they listen to maybe three in a month everything becomes restricted and I'm not paying like 11 99 a month to be restricted after two books because if I pay for Audible, Audible is $7.99 a month and I get a credit and then throughout the month they do daily deals and they're usually $1.99 or $2.99 and I can get another book and I'm already basically at the same price as a script subscription, but I'm not then limited. There's more audible sales and I can read more and pay to read more. And I'm paying discounted prices. So if I was gonna go back to a subscription, I would go to Audible again, I think, because I'm a bit too, I don't know. I don't trust Scribd. Scribd seems like a bit of a scam if they're gonna restrict it when they say it's unlimited. But yeah, sorry, <laughs> that's just a little bit of a ramble about Scribd, but yeah, 11 books. It was a really great reading month. I really, really enjoyed these books and I had so many surprises in there. It's like so many books that are better than I expected. I think actually this year overall is going to have a pretty high average rating and I think I'm actually going to do a little thing at the end of the year where I go through and do some stats. Maybe just for my own interest. I might not make a video unless people really want that. Um, just to see like how many audiobooks I read, how many are young adult and middle grade and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, I only read one middle grade this month and I'm really hoping to read more because I really enjoyed that one. I've enjoyed all the middle grades that I've read so far. So all is good. But yeah, um, I think that is all that I've got for you today. So thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it through all of this rambling. And yeah, I hope you have had a good reading month too. I hope October is good and yeah. That is it, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more videos. Let me know down in the comments if you have any thoughts on the books that I've read or if you have any books you'd like to recommend to me. That is it, so thanks for watching, bye.